A new report out today finds the percentage of Americans considered Bible engaged is now equal to the percentage who do not believe the Bible to be sacred. Since 2011, this latter category of Bible skeptics has risen from 10% to 19% of those surveyed. And during the same period, the percentage considered Bible friendly dropped from 45 to 37% while that Bible engaged number remained steady. The percentage of those considered neutral towards the Bible, 26% in 2014, has remained statistically unchanged. Uh, the report conducted by the Barna Group details Americans' belief about the Bible, its role in society, and also its presence in U.S. homes. As in previous years, the survey found the Bible remains a highly valued, influential force in America, but beliefs about the Bible and its role in society are becoming increasingly uh, polarized particularly when you break the data down by demographics, by age groups. And that's why we're so pleased to have uh, to be joined now by Jeff Morin, the Chief Communications Officer at the American Bible Society. Jeff, thank you for your time and welcome to America's Forum. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, Jeff, you hear these numbers and all these studies that come out about what so many of us believe to be God's Word. What do you make of this study's findings? Well, let's, let's break it down, and you get down, and you, you've done a good job introducing it as well. Uh, America is still very, very pro-Bible. Statistics that we found that I think we just need to hold on to. 88% of Americans have a Bible in their home. The average American household today has more than four Bibles in it. So there's lots of folks who are in possession of Bibles. They have access to the Bible. But I love what you guys did in the introduction to this. What becomes critical is how do we talk about the Bible? How do we begin to under, understand it and put it in the context of our lives? That really, to me, is the critical issue that we're looking at here. And what's the, what's the easiest way to do that now and make the Bible relevant for people who don't really see the relevance in their daily lives? We see a lot of new movies coming out in Hollywood. Uh, the Noah movie comes to mind, Son of God also as well. But how do we really make the lessons in the Bible relevant for a younger generation who don't seem to be so engaged? Yeah, that's a great point. So in the very, you know, this is the very first time I've ever seen this balance, the polarity you're talking about of those who love the Bible, they love the Bible, they're engaged, and those who are very skeptical of it. You know, that, that it's never, that the, the fast rise of those doubters is, is put in whole new landscape together. But you're right, at the exact same time, we're seeing these blockbusters appearing in modern media, particularly coming out in film, but also some television as well. Uh, the 10-year anniversary of the Passion of the Christ will hit television this week for the first time. So you, you've got opportunity. What's the best way for, for people to get to? And I'm thinking a lot about young people. You mentioned that they really are key drivers in this, these, this category of doubters and those who are driving folks away from the Bible. Clearly, people today still very much read Bible as uh, kind of turning pages. It's got a black leather cover. It might have a gold cross on it. That's still the primary usage. But we're also seeing incredible rises in the number of digital tools out there. And so now something like three or four out of 10 people are augmenting how they read the Bible in web tools, in apps, in digital formats, where that device in your pocket can become a Bible and should become a Bible. There's some clues there when we look at the change in format and the means by which digital is becoming so fastly adopted as a Bible resource for Americans today. Now, Jeff, when we talk about the millennial generation as a group, we often hear that they don't associate, they don't really believe in institutions, big groups, uh, things like government bodies. We, we see that with the NSA scandal. And also, this could apply to churches as well. Young people not really buying into the idea of a religious institution. Is there a difference between that, not buying into a church, a big you know, national organization or international organization, and them not buying into religion itself, the faith? Here's, here's what we tell the folks we work with. We work with lots of pastors and leaders who are very concerned about the, the research that we're showing, but also what they're seeing in their churches. The Bible is, is the leading indicator for what's going to come for the church. It's it, it seen again and again. That's why we show this research. That's why I want lots of leaders to be looking at this and, and let it be predictive for them. As people are moving away from the Bible, so will follow church attendance and discipleship and mission in many ways. Uh, we've seen that just for many, many years. So, of course, we want people to be aware of what we're seeing here. The, for young people today, here's what also we see in the research, and I think is predictive for us. A, a critical determinant for whether young people will be engaged in Scripture is what happens.
happens and what do they find when they face any number of, of challenges in their lives, you know, significant trauma, breakdown of a family, breakdown of some of the institutions they trusted, as you mentioned, or even more minor things. What they find at that moment, at that, you know, at that point of decision, will determine where they go for faith and church. If they find the resource they need in Scripture, they'll move forward in faith and hope and church and so on. If they don't, they'll become that group of antagonists that we're all talking about. Let's, let's hope they choose the prior version because the Bible can provide a lot of great stories and a foundation for morals. Thank you very much, Jeff, for being with us. Jeff Moore, Chief Communications Officer at the American Bible Society. We'll be right back with more here on America's Forum right after this.